Hauntingly Humdrum, a slice of life Halloween anthology. This episode, a familiar betrayal. A small boy tugs on his mother's hand, pulling her towards a poster tacked onto a telephone pole. Mama! Mama, look! The poster reads, Giant Pumpkin Competition, October 24th, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., $1,000 prize to first place winner. The boy bounces up and down excitedly. Mama! Mama, can we enter? I want to join! There is a sigh, and the mother shakes her head, lamenting that while the prize money would be nice, they do not, in fact, have a pumpkin to enter the competition. She gently pulls the boy away, shushing his protests, and they continue their walk home. As they make their way up the block, there is a rustling in the bushes beside them. A scruffy black cat pushes through the brush and trots onto the sidewalk in front of them. (gasps) Kitty! The boy runs towards the cat, who stays just beyond the child's reach. The mother grabs at her son, warning him away from stray cats likely filled with disease and covered in fleas. The cat flops down on the path before them, looking primly up at the mother, as if insisting its own innocence. The mother regards the cat skeptically, an eyebrow raised, then skirts around it on the path, guiding her child away. Later that afternoon, when the boy has been nudged gently out into the backyard to play in the fallen leaves to give his mothers a moment of peace and quiet, the cat reappears. When the boy notices, he giggles and runs over to the cat, stumbling through the pile of leaves he has collected, scattering them across the yard in his haste. When the boy gets close enough to touch, the cat stands and darts away, just out of reach again, and sits back down, bright yellow eyes watching the boy with a keen interest. The boy moves towards the cat again, reaching to scoop the cat up in its arms, only for it to bound away again. The boy halts his pursuit and studies the cat, tilting his head curiously. Do you want me to follow you, kitty? What is it? The cat sits a few feet away, tail twitching, waiting. When the boy takes a cautious step forward again, the cat stands. Once it is clear that the boy will follow, the cat jogs off further from the property in the direction of the woods behind the boy's house. The cat leads the boy into the trees, stopping every few feet to make sure he's still following. After about ten minutes of meandering, the cat darts off ahead into a clearing the boy can see, just beyond a small copse of birch trees, a stark white contrast against the rest of the dark oak and pine trees that make up the majority of these woods. As the boy stumbles into the clearing, he gasps. A pumpkin! Wowie, it's huge! In the middle of the clearing is an enormous pumpkin, as tall as the trees and nearly as wide as the clearing. The boy beams and approaches, running a hand over its smooth orange surface. He then turns to the cat, who has flopped over onto its side next to the pumpkin, looking positively smug. Its tail flicks back and forth in wide, sweeping arcs, and it blinks slowly at the boy, patient and pleased. The boy grins and kneels down beside the cat, reaching out to scratch behind its ears. Oh, this is gonna win the pumpkin contest for sure! I gotta go find Mama and Ima! They're gonna freak when they see this! The boy stands and bounces a little on his toes, dancing with excitement, and then turns and runs back through the forest towards his home. (laughs) 
Later that evening, a truck pulls into the clearing, towing a massive trailer, and two women and a few men from the town clamber down from the truck, planning how to load the pumpkin onto the trailer. Holy carp! It's huge! Is this... is this even gonna fit in the truck? If you want to carve it, we're gonna have to get, like, a machete. <sighs> okay, let me help. I sense the moment the vine growing my pumpkin snaps. <gasps> I have spent months growing this pumpkin. I am connected to the magic that fills it and encourages it to balloon and blossom into the behemoth it has become. By the time I've bolted from my cottage and made it to the clearing, the pumpkin is gone. <gasps> Sable! Did you just give away the prize pumpkin I have spent all year growing to an eight-year-old? Sable looks at me, her eyes glinting in the evening light. Isn't it time someone else had a chance? Would you have said no to a child? Her expression conveys volumes of judgment, and I cross my arms, glaring down at her. No treats for you for a week, you rascal. Now off you go. Shoo! <sighs> and that, folks, is how I lost the giant pumpkin competition for the first time in over 40 years. Sabotaged, betrayed by my own familiar... Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Hauntingly Humdrum. This episode was written by Keen Knight. The narrator was performed by Anjali Pusipathy. The boy was performed by Philomena Sherwood. Our pumpkin gatherers were Mike Queller and Shade Oyamakimo. Sound design by Gabby Hall. The music used for the intro and outro of the podcast is... The Show Must Be Go by Kevin MacLeod. Links for transcripts and cast and crew information can be found in the show notes. Happy Halloween!